tell you why, how, or what for, but I want to make a friendship bracelet. I've never been good at this, like, at all. I don't know what it is, but me and jewelry just don't get along. Unless, like, the chain is pre-made for me and I'm just attaching, you know, some some charms or tassels or, or, or things like that. I can't make bracelets. I mean, we've all seen me attempt to make bracelets. Self-adjusting ones, you know, things you tie. No, I'm not good at any of that. But this advertises itself as a simple way to make a perfect friendship bracelet every time. And I need to make sure that my friends know that I love them with a bracelet for the holidays. Um, of course, I'm not certain that this video will make it out before the holidays, but I'm like thrilled. I had so much embroidery floss in my youth, uh, all with the intentions of making friendship bracelets because all the cool girls had them. And let me tell you, I was never a cool girl, ever. And while these colors together may be absolutely atrocious to me, I am going to follow the directions and I'm going to make a friendship bracelet successfully today. That is the goal. It's even got it all set up for me and everything. And honestly, this whole like setup, like I, I bet I could even like DIY that, you know? That feels like it would be something that'd be uh, pretty useful to a handful of you so you don't have to go out and spend $1.99. If you got some spare cardboard lying around, you know, make a circle in the middle here and, and, and you cut out a circle and cut out however many notches there are. I'll even count them for you. That's how good of a YouTuber I am. Uh, but yeah, I want to make a friendship bracelet today. And I am searching for instructions. There they are, the instructions. Guys, I'm going to make a friendship bracelet today. Haha, <laughs> so I guess I'm not making friendship bracelets today. Um, this here piece of thread was so stuck. It's still not coming out that I actually ripped the thread off of it. How am I going to make a friendship bracelet now? No. Okay. Okay, got it out. So, hopefully if you are making this at home... Uh, you don't do what I did and make it or, or get one that's too tight Because uh, yikes, I really did not foresee this being an issue I'm just gonna tie it back together and, and then hope for the best uh, Because I am making a friendship bracelet today and you know If I actually had like a, like a big following and I weren't doing this because I actually genuinely enjoy media production and like people commented on my videos ever I have to imagine like the most popular comment under these videos being something like nobody and then it has like the blank space and then it says Brie IY I made a friendship bracelet today because honestly that's how I feel right now yeah that ain't sticking too hot is it man and now my son my darling sterling is playing with what plastic in the back where'd you get a bag hold on please the holiday time is just the worst for plastic being around and of course my son just loves any like the noise that plastic makes so he's doing he's just living his best life in this fine winter season i'm gonna keep trying to learn and then i'll come back and report later <laughs> All right, I think I got it, and no, I do not want to talk about how many pieces of thread broke or how many times my cat tried to eat it or what. Uh, we're just gonna power through and live our best lives. So basically, it's as simple as looking at every section of two. Um, so it has the triangles to make it like easy to kind of see them at first, but they will move out of those triangles. Um, so pick from the right first and go look at what's directly across from it and put it on the right there. Um, I've also noticed that if I don't stick them all the way in, they're not as hard to get out. So now we have three on the bottom, so to make sure that it goes back to two, we need to grab from the left and pop it into the left so you can see it's going outside of that start. Turn counterclockwise to the next set of two and do the same thing. So grab from the right down to the right, from the bottom left, be careful not to rip it, 
to the top left. Oh, honey, no. And then continue going around on the next two and powering through and hopefully that your sweetly manicured little cat does not eat all of your thread. <laughs> Come on, honey, no. So I'm gonna hyperlapse through this and we're gonna see what it looks like because I'm actually really excited. It feels like something I've done in an art school project before, not art school, uh, art class, like probably in middle school or even maybe elementary, but I mean, if it works, I'm gonna keep rolling with it because, you know, everyone wants to be one of those cool girls with the, with the hip friendship bracelets and, and tons of them so that you, they can show, you know, you have lots of friends. So <laughs> I wanna be that girl, I wanna be nostalgic and we're gonna try powering through. So let me try setting up an awkward camera angle of just my hands while I watch some copyrighted material on Netflix slash Hulu and um, we'll just see how this turns out. So this is about as far as I've got. I'm actually going home to visit my mother this weekend and I'd really like to go see her a little bit sooner rather than later. So I don't think I will be able to finish this whole bracelet today. And not to mention, I really don't feel like spending a lot of my time on a bracelet that I'm definitely not gonna wear. And these really aren't my colors. Um, at best, I might finish this up with my mom this weekend and give it to my little cousin. But uh, beyond that, I think this is where I'm going to stop and I'm gonna end off with a little bit of a tutorial on how to make one of these for yourself so you don't have to go out and buy one. I did get this from Hobby Lobby. Again, it was only $1.99, but if you have some cardboard laying around and some extra embroidery floss and you don't have to make a Hobby Lobby run, why do it if you don't have to? Um, so it's a couple of things that I did want to kind of throw out there. As far as keeping my place, I've decided to actually just take down so that I had my group of three at the bottom and I can see very clearly uh, based on the patterns. And after doing it a handful of times, these have loosened up a little bit and I haven't uh, torn any threads since those initial maybe two or three that popped. Um, but I pulled it down here so I can see that I have my group of three and I know which one to start with to pull it back up there uh, into that little section bit. Um, there will eventually be like like this down here, like groups of five. Um, that's normal. Um, it's just important to make sure that you're only keeping track of the ones that you pulled down. So like I pulled down from there. So obviously this next one's gonna go up to here and then I have to go straight to the next ones that are immediately beside it. And that will end up opening up that little hole here when I eventually pull that one up into this loop. Um, so that was kind of like the hardest thing to get over was recognizing that they were getting closer together, but that's just, it, it's how it's gonna be and it's gonna be okay. That's, that's what's supposed to happen. Um, as far as uh, keeping track of where I'm going, um, one of the tips on the piece of paper that I actually like using is keep making sure that my thumb on the top is where it stays and only moving my right hand. Um, it doesn't work so well when you're also trying to stop a cat from eating the bottoms of your pieces. Um, but overall, I'd say that this is a pretty simple craft. I'm so, so, so certain that I have actually done this at some point in uh, the past, <laughs> probably. I remember doing it with like probably purple because that was my favorite color at the time and like blues and, and, and teal kind of like metallic thread and making a little something like this that just was like super long for some reason. And I remember like people were making these and doing this a lot when I was younger. And I think it's like a nice, like thick kind of bracelet. It's definitely like, this is not going anywhere. It's really tough actually. Um, so yeah, I can foresee this being a nice representation of a long lasting friendship for middle school girls everywhere. Um, so with that said, I am going to jump into showing you how to make one of these for yourself. So let's do that. So I have this cup here that's about the same size diameter wise as this. So that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm popping it in the middle of this foam board. I don't have any cardboard that I'm willing to give up right now. I'm using it as gift wrap and I, I don't think I wanna tear a flap off. So just to make sure I'm being the most space effective, I'm gonna pop this in the corner here, take a Sharpie and draw around it so that I have a nice perfect circle. Plastic cup, of course. I like to reuse these as my uh, paint water cups, just so I'm not getting any paint or anything nasty in my um, in my uh, food. We you know when I'm actually using them to drink. Plus, now I can use them, like I said, with the sharpies, and not worry about getting sharpie or you know pencil markings or anything all over uh, my actual drinking cups. So I'm just gonna cut this out next. So 
as you can see, they're about the same size. Definitely not perfect, but I don't think it needs to be. I think as long as you're following the folding pattern, it doesn't really matter if these lines are perfect or not. Um, so I did counter on the outside and there are exactly 32 different um, notches kind of cut around the sides. So I'm going to start doing like kind of a, a four way notch situation. So I'll do one cut there. This would be cut 16 down at the bottom there, which means this cut over here is going to be eight. And then over here, we're going to have four. All right, there we go. We got 32 different cuts all the way around so that I can uh, slit my uh, string in there. And the hole in the middle also does not have to be perfect. Again, it's just for the uh, weave to come out. So just fold her in half and cut out a moderately sized circle. And then you would just take your string and tie it up starting with um, basically eight different sections in every direction. So you would do like that, slip inside, two at the top, then skip two, and then the next two here, next two here, just like you would see on these um, triangles here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight triangles, and then there's two slits in between each triangle um, in case you wanted to add like that kind of feature to it just to make it easier to kind of count out and see where you're at. Um, or you could make all the triangles different colors to make it easy for you to actually tell which direction uh, things are coming from or where you left off really so you could say oh i left off on the purple triangle and then you know we would have to start by the purple triangle um so yeah super easy to make super easy to work with um i mean once you kind of figure it out and get used to the motion um the biggest th issue that i had was occasionally like if i'm not paying too cl like close enough attention i would say like pick this up and, and drop it off in like the wrong slot slot slit i almost don't know what to call them um, but it's a pretty simple process, a pretty simple craft, and I think this is something that's really nice to do if you're a teacher um, and you need a little like arts and craft project for some of your kiddos or an art teacher that wants to do some more textile stuff or just a parent babysitter that would like to do some crafts with your kids. Super cheap, super easy. Uh, you could even let them kind of pick out their own embroidery flosses since, you know, you could get a big giant chunk of them for um, only a couple cents. I mean, you could get maybe three different colors for a dollar. Uh, pretty much at any store, any craft store, I think they're 44 to 48 cents depending on where you go. But yeah, I think it's a fun craft. I'm really excited that I can possibly finally make a friendship bracelet and, and wear it around and be one of the cool girls, you know, just like childhood me always wanted. If you like what you saw and you want some more budget-friendly DIYs, arts and crafts, and uh, crafting hacks, you are more than welcome to subscribe. I put out new videos every Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And yeah, if you like what you saw, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell. I don't care. Do what you want. But hopefully I will be seeing you next Sunday for another crafty video. See you then.